that's a redox reaction as well. Now, another reaction, if you have metal magnesium, you dip it into hydrogen chloride, uh, hydrochloric acid there, you generate hydrogen gas. All of these are redox reactions. So in general, we say a redox reaction will involve a transfer of electrons from one reactant to another. So there is a motion of electron going from one place to another. Whenever it involves a transfer of electron, you have a redox reaction. Here, oxygen, hydrogen, gas. When we ask you to determine the charges, well, you know the atoms and molecules, and they start with charge, you know, the equal number of protons and, uh, and electrons in them. Okay, so oxygen, gas, we would say the oxidation number or the charges would be zero. Hydrogen gas will be zero. But when you have H2O, hydrogen bears partial positive charge. Oxygen bears partial negative charge. Now, whenever you have an imbalance in charges there, that means electrons have, have gone from one place to another. Okay. Here, copper, zero. Silver, one plus. Copper, two plus. Going from zero to two plus, there's a change. In order for this change to happen, there has to be a transfer of electrons. Silver from positive one to zero. There has to be a transfer of electron. One gives out electron, the other takes in electron. Okay? So that's the essence of the redox reaction. A redox re reaction involves a change of oxidation number. How do we determine oxidation number? And that's one of the key objectives of this particular learning activity. Okay? So how do we recognize redox reaction? Well, there are certain terms involved in redox reaction. And those are what we call the, the D word definition. Oxidation involves the reactant atom losing electrons. And that's one thing we need you to memorize. Reduction, I try to color code them as well so that it's easier for you to remember all these different terms. So reduction involves the reactant atom gaining electrons. So transfer of electrons, one loses, the other gains. And uh, things start to get a little bit confusing. The reactant that is oxi oxidized is called reducing reagent. The reactant that is reduced is called oxidizing reagent. So our objective is that given a chemical reaction, you need to be able to identify which one is the oxidizing reagent, which one is being oxidized. And they mean different things there. So one thing that you need to remember is that neither process can occur alone. Whenever there's an oxidation reaction, there has to be a reduction reaction going on at the same time. Someone cannot just say, well, I don't like this electron. I want to throw it out. There has to be someone out there willing to take in the electron. Okay? So when the electron transfer happens there, there's a giver, there's a taker. You can't just have the taker or the giver. You have to happen. They have to happen simultaneously. Okay, so in this case, if you have magnesium metal reacting with hydrogen ion, hydrochloric acid, resulting in magnesium chloride, magnesium ion, chloride ions present on both sides of the equation. Part of the self-study topic there, talking about the net ionic equation. That means if you have chloride ion on the left side, two of them, chloride ion on the right side, two of them, they're not really doing anything. We call them spectator ions, and so you can cross them out. You don't have to include them in the balanced chemical reaction equation. This is what we call the net ionic equation. So in this case, we need you to be able to identify which one is the reducing reagent, which one is being oxidized. So in this case, magnesium is losing electron because magnesium starts with zero charge, 12 atoms and 12 protons and 12 electrons. Okay. When you get on this side, two positive charges. That means you have 12 protons, only 10 electrons. That's how you end up with two plus charge. Okay. So magnesium is losing electron. Oxidation involves reactant atom losing electron. Okay. Hydrogen ion, positive one. Hydrogen gas, zero. Okay. Gained electron. So Magnesium is being oxidized. Hydrogen ion is being reduced. Magnesium is your reducing reagent. Hydrogen ion is your oxidizing reagent. Very confusing, these different terms there. You have to focus on 
where did the electron go? Transfer of electron. So how do we memorize what happens in a redox reaction? This is a picture and I feel right at home. My parents are petroleum engineers and their footsteps are all over China. When I was a kid, almost like a military family, we go from one place to another and trying to dig up oil to burn and generate the greenhouse effect politically loud. It feels right at home. In the middle of nowhere, this is an oil rig. Oil rig stands for oxidation is loss of electron. That's oil. Rig, reduction is gaining of electron. Okay. Now if you don't have my experience there, an the oil rig may not help you, and this guy will probably help you to identify redox reaction. Leo the line, maybe he ate one of my chicken there, goes up there and her. Uh, I can't find Leo, I know, this is not Leo, but hey, I think they're, they belong to the same family. Okay. Loss of electron is oxidation, that's Leo. G-E-R, gain of electron is reduction. So that tells you the direction of the electron. Where does the electron go? What happens in the electron transfer, in redox reaction, in terms of electron transfer? So this is something, these two pictures, and hopefully every time you think about the uh, <coughs> redox reaction, mm -hmm. this will help you to identify what happens in terms of electron transfer. Okay, so oxidation number, there's an oxidation number change. How do we assign oxidation? Well, first of all, what is oxidation number? Is it the charge? Well, it's similar, not the same thing. Now, oxidation state or oxidation number, very much like the charges. They bear a positive sign, they bear a negative sign there. Oxidation number, however, is not something that we can measure. It's imaginary based on the electron transfer, if you lose one electron, the oxidation number goes up by one. If you gain an electron, the oxidation, oxidation number goes down by one. Very much like the charges there. The charges, the charges are something that we can actually measure in the laboratory. An oxidation number is purely imaginary. Based on the assignment of the electron going from one place to the other, and we have a positive number, negative number associated with those different species there. Okay. Iron charges are real, measurable charges. Oxidation number is different. Now, what's the difference? How do you differentiate when you write the oxidation number versus the charge? Well, we use the positive sign, negative sign there. Okay. If it's too positive charge, you put the number two with the charge. Oxidation number, it's positive and the two. Okay. The sequence there. Number in front of the sign, two positive, that's a charge. Positive two, that's an oxidation number. Okay. Sometimes they are the same as the charge, sometimes they're different. And it's something that you need to be able to um, uh, uh, differentiate. Now when you try to recognize a redox reaction here, what we are actually asking you to look for is looking for an element that has a different oxidation number before and after the reaction. If there's a change in oxidation number, that's redox reaction. That's how we identify redox reaction. Okay, so example, oxygen, hydrogen, water. Oxidation number here, for any element in the, for any matter that's in the elemental form, in pure atomic form there, or molecular form, that's pure elements there, oxidation number will be zero. So zero, zero, here, later on we'll say, this is positive one, negative two. So there is a change in oxidation number because hydrogen, when hydrogen combine with